Hello everybody, Nathan here with a behind the scenes look at the Miracle Fact Sheet. Um, I'm going to be explaining briefly, that is, how we created the fact sheet and some of the challenges we encountered while making it. So, for starters, we have these two lovely pictures here that I found off of Google Image Search. Um, it's probably no big secret that I'm not a very good artist when it comes to drawing. So, what I did is I traced pictures. Yep, that's what I did. So, this picture I actually didn't really grab anything off of. Um, this one I traced Lazarus, who I believe is this guy. Who it is invisible? Oh, there you go. Yep. So, I just used my Wacom stylus graphics tablet, and I traced them out. Um, now, the big thing here was putting, and this, this was very important for later on, um, doing, you know, filling them in with light, and then having alpha behind them, and my apologies for that scream you just heard, that was one of my siblings running upstairs making a massively loud racket, which was really unnecessary. But, this is kind of the reason why it has to be filled with light. Because, okay, so I have this character of Lazarus. I'll just throw another random character here. I don't even know which I picked there. Let me zoom out so we can see that. Turn off this background. Turn on down. Okay, so that's the Jesus picture. So, and in the video or the clip, rather. Um, Jesus is actually standing in front of Lazarus, but the point of this, I'm trying to get a point I can grab that, if I left their background alpha, we would get something that looks a little like this, which looks pretty horrible. Can't really make out what's going on, or what is what. So, I had to fill them all with white, and then when I took this into the compositor and blender, I actually just took all this white and eliminated it through a node setup, which I'll show you. Uh, one little thing I wanted to point out here, just to show off my wonderful drawing skills. Nice feet. Excellent feet. Yeah, feet were kind of cut off in the picture. It actually ended about here. So, I think I did an okay job with the rest of the roll, but I kind of killed it on the feet. Anyways, moving right along. Uh, I can close that without saving, because it's not really important. And then... Launching Blender. Okay, so... I brought all of those individual portions of the big picture into Blender. Uh, using an add-on, which is called... Images Planes. Just a really handy way to import images into a scene and have everything all set up for you. Uh, scene 12, I'm just going to grab one here. Um, I will grab a different one. So you have options here, like in my case, shadeless, we want to use the alpha, so we'll pre-multiplied, and z transparent, and then plain dimensions. Um, DPI, these are a very low DPI. They actually look pretty bad if you do it second so DPI. They're just super tiny. So I just went with an absolute dimension of about 4. And you can still scale that around later on. They always import laying flat, which I don't know why, but easy enough to rotate that 90 to pull it up. Um, now this picture, I think, actually, yeah, some little rocks down there. So then it was just a matter of aligning the bottom of the image with the grid floor, which... You wouldn't think it's too difficult, but it can be pretty tricky. But that looks about right. And then I would just check it real quick in the camera. Those racks you won't even see. Just pull them along. And with some of these feet, they kind of went below the grid floor. So it was always, well, i got to make sure I leave enough space from where I'm putting these racks on someone's feet so it doesn't look like the racks are floating or their feet are going underground. Um, now you might notice here that I do have some sky on the top and then some nothingness on the bottom. That's okay because I set my world background to white. So everything behind 
this will all be white. And again, I mean, you can see the importance of filling the characters with white, because otherwise I would have this character, you would see this guy, you would see the tombstone that was rolled in front of the tomb, you'd see the tomb background, it would be a mess. So, let me just render this out quick. Okay, so I've got that rendered out. Um, I just have this little hand background so I can kind of see it better. This is what it'll actually be saving as. Um, so this is the render layer, and this is my grunge background, which just does this little bit of feathering along the edges. You can kind of see it better with the peaches background there, where you got some feathering going on. All the magic, if I can call it that, it's not the magic, is going on in this node group. Open that up and throw in a viewer so you can see what's going on. So we have that background which I made, and I think I used Krita actually. Um, that's just the rendered scene. And then I have this alpha channel, which I don't really know why I'm using an alpha channel. Because. Oh, I'm using the image as the alpha. Okay. So, first off, to actually create my alpha channel, I am. I'm taking the background, or the rendered image, which was the lightish, well, not really light, but that burgundy brownish, and I'm saying anything higher than 0.65, I want it to be black, anything lower than that, white. So now I've created an invert alpha which I then turn into the correct alpha channel by inverting it. White will be visible, the black will be invisible. Then I multiply that with that grunge texture to give that feathering on the edges. And then I have this color here, which, if you notice right now, it pretty much just creates a solid brown background. Now you can see slight little bits of the character there. But it pretty much just makes a complete brown background, which then when I put in the viewer, goes back to the original brown color that I want. So then that just exports, I have this little switch here, which one version's the alpha background, one has that peachish color. And then I just render that out. Uh, render settings, going half of the HD width, because it's only showing on half the screen. And then just making sure to have, um, RGB, so I make the letter A. I do need the alpha, because if I don't have the alpha saved, it's not going to work in the next step, which is pulling the sequence of images into KDM Live and then layering them on top of, you know, the standard fact sheet backgrounds, which then show through on all the alpha spots here, giving me the effect we wanted. So there you have it, a behind the scenes look at the Miracle Fact Sheet, and you can watch the Miracle Fact Sheet because it's linked right in about the center of the screen, right in your face, saying Miracle Fact Sheet. So click on that to watch it, or ignore it and don't watch it. I mean, it's totally up to you. But thanks for watching this behind-the-scenes look, and stay tuned for more updates.